Welcome back, everyone. My name is Emily Gear. I'm a multidimensional channel, transformative energy healer. Uh, I am back with your reading for this week. Um, today is May the 8th, and so I attend, intend this reading to cover the next seven days, but actually I intend it to cover the next seven days from whenever you find it. So um, just know that uh, it should appear for you when it's exactly right. Um, what a crazy week. I don't know how you guys have been, but I feel like it has been just really up and down for me. Um, I have had a lot of different um, emotional things coming up, but my Chiron is in Taurus and all kinds of things have been conjuncting and squaring and blah, blah, blah. So anyway, what a, what a week. Um, before I continue with the reading, here's my website as usual. This is where you can book a one-on-one -on -one Zoom session with me for either reading or energy healing or both. Um, I only differentiate by the time. So once we're in the session, we can decide to do whatever we want to do. And frankly, I usually follow both what you want and what the Akashic Records um, channels to me that you need. So we may come up with some brand new healing techniques on on Zoom. Who knows? Um, so anyway, you can do that there. There are also some offerings by email, which you can purchase. And, um, and I thank you for your support. I've had quite a few uh, vet bills and medical bills of my own, and your support is very, very much appreciated. So without further ado, we're going to get to the cards. I'm going to start out with my flash cards, which are not meant for divination at all, but I still use them because I read intuitively, so who cares? All right. All right, we've got dress and shoes. That's interesting. Um, all right. So this to me looks like going out. I want to say almost like like bright and new in your Sunday best. So there may be a renewal on the horizon for you or for all of us. Um, this reading is for the collective. So I would, oh my God, I can't even, I just pulled out hat also. So it's like, okay, this is, you're getting all ready. You're getting all ready to go. Um, so in the next week, it may be that some of you are kind of renewing your sense of how you present yourself to the public. Um, I also want to say in some senses, because I'm looking at hat and shoes, you know, how you protect yourself from things from the outside or hide yourself from things from the outside. So there's something coming up here. Uh, if I'm just riffing off of these cards, like surrounding the idea of who you really are, presenting your true face to the public, or deciding who it is that you are going to present your most vulnerable self to. Because I get the feeling that, you know, it's not necessary to just go out there and like, um, you know, you want to be able to be vulnerable when... Um, when it's in alignment, okay? But you also want to be able to have boundaries when that is in alignment. So there's a balance there. And there may be different situations in which you feel you need to be more protected and situations where you need to be um, more carefree, okay? Um, that can go from anything from, uh, are you going out wearing a mask or are you, you know, not? Or do you feel safe or do you not? Or But it, it can also go down to like um, your private relationships at this time. How are these, how have these changed and how will you move forward with them? What face are you now presenting? And I want to say that that has changed for many people over the last couple months is the face that you present. Is it a more authentic face at this time? Um, and I, I think that, um, that question we can ask ourselves and figure out what we need to do in order to be presenting that most authentic face. Maybe some of the things that we were doing and the ways that we were presenting ourselves a couple months ago are no longer in alignment with who we are. And 
the face we saw in the mirror when we had nothing else to do but look at ourselves in the mirror, so to speak, in the last couple months. So I'm definitely feeling the sense of renewal, the sense of um, who you really are, what, what you're presenting um, to those outside of you, and where that matches up with the idea of vulnerability or boundaries. And so keeping both of those things in mind, that both of those are kind of I don't want to say they're opposites, you know, because you can have boundaries with somebody, but also be vulnerable to them um, in a positive way, like emotionally vulnerable. But I want to say that um, there's sort of a, there's like a complex mixing of ideas that appear to be opposite, which we are needing to be able to uh, integrate within ourselves right now, because nothing is as simple as we want to make it. Nothing is as black and white as we want to make it, right? All this politics garbage is proof enough of that, right? There's always the side story, that side story, and the truth, correct? So um, moving on from that, let's go ahead. I got the, what are these, the Chakra Wisdom cards? Chakra Wisdom cards. This is not a new deck, but I finally got this the other week. So we're going to use those and just see what comes out. Um, there is a unique way that these are read. I have not read the full book. So again, I read intuitively. We'll just see what comes out and it's totally fine. All right. So what other messages do we have for the collective at this time? Okay. Five of cups. Messages for the collective, please. goodness all of these are coming out they are all blue they're all fifth chakra so there's something here about communication we do have oh never mind I don't know I was about to say we have mercury in Gemini which we actually might but I think what I was actually trying to say is we have Venus going retrograde in Gemini very soon Gemini being very much about communication um, and so what we have here is the Five of Cups with the Moon and the Knight of Cups. All of these showing up with the energy of the Fifth Chakra. Um, okay, I don't, I don't want to think too hard about this. I just want to feel into it. I, I feel like I get the most information when I take my brain out of it. Shocker. That's how we're supposed to do it, right? Um, so what I'm feeling is actually that there may be internal wounds that are coming up to the surface and we're kind of almost want to be like offering them up. Like we're, we're sort of like uh, sacrificing them for the greater good. And that might not be your conscious process or your conscious thought process. But I think there is, um, I'm feeling this sense of intolerance to living in a certain way anymore. Um, this has come up a number of times, but this has a slightly different energy in the sense that it's almost a complete surrender to the fact that um, you can't think your way out of this. Whatever this feeling is, you can't think your way out of it. I also want to say with this, this blue expression energy here, that for a lot of you, I want to say that writing out your feelings is going to be really effective. For some of you, it might be that you want to record, you know, a video or you want to literally talk to somebody, um, whether it be a therapist, a family member, or the person, you know, uh, a partner or the person actually involved in whatever is going on here. I'm getting this and I think it's coming from the moon, even though the moon is usually associated with Pisces. There's something about this that's giving me an eighth house, eighth house um, uh, whatever, relating to the eighth house, I think, because the moon is the subconscious, which is the eighth house, which is Scorpio. Oh, and we just had a Scorpio full moon. Oh my God, literally yesterday. So your Scorpio, full, that is what we are talking about. Okay, so probably that full moon brought up some emotional crap. I love how they do this. It's amazing. I feel like such an idiot. Like I'm just being like kind of thrown breadcrumbs and it's mostly because I'm human and am probably uh, 
you know, am still in the process of opening up more and more and more and more to what they want to want to give me. And so sometimes it takes me a while to get there to really hear. Um, but anyway, so this is that energy of the subconscious um, emotional wounds that's coming out. And there just really is this feeling of surrendering it or offering it up. Like, please just, you know, here it is bare and naked in my hand in my freaking cup here this is the feeling i'm no longer in denial of it please help me <laughs> or something whatever your intention is for this feeling you know it could be different for everybody but i do feel like for a lot of you with the five of cups here this is surrounding emotional wounding um in some kind of relationship so could be childhood could be one-on-one, -on -one, you know, romantic relationships. It could be with yourself because, oh, okay, they're reminding me today earlier when I was driving, I was just driving home from the vet because I do think these things at crazy times of the day and I was just suddenly in tears being like, oh my God, Emily, you have been so uncaring and so uncompassionate to yourself and remembering the times when I rejected myself versus giving myself love when I needed it, you know, like, and I'm think I think it's because I was driving through some neighborhoods um, where I grew up. And so it reminded me of like times in like grade school, uh, high school, but mostly grade school. And the rejection that I felt in grade school was immense. Like it was not only within my own family at home, but it was the second I stepped into the school doors, like I just felt, you know, I was not accepted by the other kids and I basically decided to reject myself. And of course, you know, a kid doesn't know any better. That's part of my path. That's part of my process and what I'm going through and how I'm growing as a human being. But um, as an adult, it's almost like I have to go back in and profoundly accept that little girl that was so rejected by everybody else for no fucking reason, you know, except for that it was part of my path. So um, that was painful, and that just happened a few hours ago. <laughs> but I also feel like I've been sort of like moving through different energies like that for a few days, even though this is for the week ahead, which tells me that either the collective is still moving through it or that we will all sort of feel the repercussions of this full moon energy for the rest of the week. But it is a healing energy, even if it is one that sort of rips open and strips bare. Um, it's, it's like draining the pus out of a wound. It's really, it's, it's for the greater healing. And that is a very scorpionic thing as well. Um, I'm seeing the black and the white wolf in this moon picture here. And I'm hearing the higher instinct. So it's almost as if we have a lower inst. I mean, we do kind of have a lower mind, a higher mind. We have a sort of a these sort of base instincts, and then we have sort of a higher, um, a higher intuition. And so this is about choosing um, a higher uh, a higher intuition over the situation. So what that means to me right now is that instead of wallowing in the sadness that we are used to or the rejection or the pain or the fear or the anxiety whatever it is that's coming up for you right now this is about um, pulling away a little bit from that and i want to even say detaching from it slightly although i'm not saying not to feel it okay because feeling is an important part of um what is it that one of my uh, coaches says feeling is part of healing or something? I don't even know, something like that. But um, what I'm feeling here is that it does take that pulling away and seeing it from a higher perspective to really be able to like kind of um, see yourself as the feeling and the experience is not you, just something that you have experienced, right? You are perfect. You are eternally and unconditionally loved. The situation may have helped to form you. The, the hurt and the feelings are part of your path, but they are not you, okay? That's another thing one of my coaches says to me all the time. So that's interesting that that's coming out here now. Um, and it's, it's that higher perspective that's going to help you uh, really drain that wound, okay? Drain the pus out of that wound. 
it's going to feel like at times you might feel like you're going at it blind. I'm sorry, I keep going on on these same three cards. And I feel like some of you are like, I don't even know what I'm like looking at. Go by the feelings is what they're saying. It doesn't matter if you can really comprehend or plot the points. Don't worry about that. Follow the feelings. And there may be people, places, things, situations that pop in your mind that are associated with those feelings. That is good because it helps to open the door for you to understand where they come from. But don't then judge them or try to create a story surrounding um, the, the situation, the person, the place, the whatever. Accept it for what it is and draw the intuitive connections is what they're saying. Once we start going down like the road of trying to create a story around it, that sometimes we derail ourselves. We sort of miss some of the points because we don't need to grasp it in a linear fashion. We just need to see the web that's built out um, so that we can see there are all these things that are linked and then we can release them en masse. It's like a... Um, I don't know what they're showing me is like if you're in a word document and you spelled one word wrong but it appears like 55 times in the document and you just search that one word and you like find and replace this is kind of like that so don't worry about looking for each little word just find and replace um hopefully that makes some sense to you that was a weird way of expressing it okay so let's get some more information they're saying it's all about the intent all right now we've moved to I swear I shuffled these a lot before I even started, but now we've got two seventh chakra um, cards. This is interesting. Hold on. Hold on. Yes. Okay. That's seventh chakra. I just needed to make sure the indigo was somewhere between this blue and this, and that this was not indigo, but that is blue. That is fifth chakra. This is seventh chakra. So we have the seven of wands and the seven of coins. So two sevens. Sevens is seven is a divine number. Makes sense that it is also attached to the seventh chakra and that this is our connection to the divine. Um, <coughs> uh, I do get the feeling here that I want to say that there's a large release of things that, that have been sort of building up and you've been waiting to get rid of, right? With the seven of coins here, the seven of wands, this is like that, that tension that is just built up. These are the triggers, the blocks, the resistance that you have been holding um, in certain areas for a very long time. And it required a kind of specific energetic blueprint in the universe, but also within you to be ready to release this stuff. And so you are there. Uh, I'm also getting the sense of divine timing out of this with the the um, alignment with the seventh chakra here. These This is resistance that has been sort of on divine timing to release at some point. So know that, you know, for those of you who are really like, yeah, but what do I do next? This is almost like a relax and trust sort of energy that you don't have to do anything next what you need to do is set the intention to release okay and i think i just said that to a client literally an hour ago um so so i feel like it's possible that this is also the collective energy of right now um I want to invite you to have a little bit of a whimsical attitude towards some of the stuff coming up that we make it so serious sometimes that it actually creates a greater sense of holding on to it. So in that way, we sabotage ourselves. Yay, because that's how it works. You know, we all have the saboteur within us. Um, so do remember that if we're, you know, again, feel the feeling, but don't dive into the hole be able to sort of take that higher perspective hold it loosely okay so that it can be released and not make it your story they're repeating that don't make it your story i'm just remembering now like i think it was maybe two weeks ago i did a session with someone and i think she said something similar to me 
So it's funny how all of this falls in alignment. Like I swear to God, I'm not just like parroting stuff I've heard in the last two weeks, but it just all kind of comes out together. Really interesting. So anyway, let's get some more information on this. Get some more information for the collective, for the energies of the week ahead, please. That's a lot of cards. Um, actually, it's so many cards. I can't even. We're just going to see what else wants to, what wants to come out, if any of those repeat or not. I'm looking for two to three cards, guys. The top card was the Four of Wands, though, so that's very positive. Messages for the week ahead. For the collective, please. Did I just stop up the works by not accepting those? I hope not. They're like, only if you think you did. Ugh. Oh. Even more. Oh well, we're just going to go with it this time. So we have the Three of Swords with the Eight of Swords in reverse. Then we have the Three of Coins with the Ten of Coins in reverse. We have the Fool. The Chariot, the Princess of Cups, and the Two of Coins. Okay, a lot of cards here. All of these. The Fool and the Chariot. The Princess of Cups and the Two of Coins in reverse. All right. So, um, first of all, we need to really, again, it's, this is the Eight of Swords in reverse and the Three of Swords together to me just feels like, you know, we're, we're the ones holding ourselves back um, as long as we are kind of holding on to the stories of heartbreak. Like those are part of your experience, but they are not you. And um, that, you know, this, this kind of gets in our way of really building who we are really, really, again, if we want to go back to revealing who we truly are and how we want to show up in the world, um, that this can stunt that but it's the process you know and, and this is not to say that you're wrong for having held yourself back in this way because it is the pro that is the process that is the part where we receive kind of the um where we grow in a spiritual way toward our highest potential because we are interfacing with um all parts of ourselves, even the wounded parts of ourselves, even the dark parts of ourselves, the shadow part of ourselves, the scorpionic part of ourselves, the moon part of ourselves, the dark side of the moon within us. That's what that's the energy that I'm I'm getting here. And um, in each one of these like groups of two, there's one card about being held back in some way or not making a choice or not being able to go. And then another card that's, you know, more proactive. So to me, this feels like a, a choice point for each one of us. Like, all right, you can release into this unknown or you can choose to stay stagnant where you are with this, you know, two of coins or the fool in reverse or the 10 of coins in reverse or this eight, um, I'm sorry, the Eight of Swords is here, but it's in reverse. So that's the more positive one. Or staying in this Three of Swords energy with the heartache. All right. There are all of these different scenarios, but in each one, you have this choice. Are you going to determinedly move forward? Are you going to fear taking that first step? Are you going to allow yourself to continue on your path to keep building up spiritually? Or are you going to sabotage your own um, happiness? Are you going to initiate this? This to me is that, that moment of self-love, that moment of self-compassion where you give to that child that was, you know, in some way suffered because every child, you know, you just... That's childhood. No matter what anybody's great intentions are, there's still the wound that comes from being 
a, a human being on the planet, okay? So there's always something there. You may have healed a lot of it, but are you going to initiate the, the love of that child? Are you going to reparent that child with unconditional love? Or are you going to sit here on your thumbs? Like, uh... And look at her. This is the two of coins. She's like standing there just staring out at that at that boat like, oh, I wish I could could move on. I wish I could, you know, whatever, travel. I wish I wish I could move on. That's the that's the phrase that really sticks with me. So, are you going to move on by making yourself vulnerable to yourself, admitting to yourself that you, you know, deserve love and compassion? which you've withheld or whatever your situation was, but I'm feeling this sense of, of the child that um, learned that he or she was not deserving in some way of something, most mostly of be of love or acceptance or whatever. Um, and that doesn't mean you had a horrific childhood. I have had many clients where I have to remind them, like just because you were not a child soldier Okay, that was my that was my phrase when I you know before I realized it's okay it's okay to need unconditional love even if you were not completely neglected or harmed or just you know horribly treated. Um, it's okay to give yourself unconditional love even if you feel like your childhood was happy. All right, there are going to be times when you were hurt as a kid and that kid is still festering within you. I don't want to say festering necessarily, but hurting, wounded within you waiting for you to take the initiative and have the the um what i want to say with this yellow uh, solar plexus chakra energy here is to take the initiative and kind of have the self power the self um imbo full embodiment to be have the strength to go to that child and say you are important too i love you that's harder for some people than you think, but it's only as hard as you make it, okay? Um, this Princess of Cups energy, this inner child energy is showing up green like the heart chakra, and that's exactly where I feel like it belongs. Um, I don't know what the book says, but, but to me, that is that innocent and pure heart energy that unconditional love and it's activating that and allowing that which allows us to move forward so again you have a choice point here are you going to keep doing what you're doing or are you going to show up in a new way for yourself and therefore for everybody else um because the reality is that dark side of the moon, that wounding, that fear that you may have is not as dark as you think it is because it's part of you. It's already there. It's it's always been there. There's nothing scary in there. It's just that you have to take the time to accept it and understand it. Just shed the light on it. And all of a sudden, it, it can no longer be dark, frankly. All right. Um... Once again, I don't even know what else I've said in this reading right now. Let's get a few more cards. Where are we at? Okay, 25 minutes. So we're going to wrap it up soon. A few more cards, please, for the collective. Tree and snake. From the white rabbit Lenormand. Ten of Cups in reverse. All right. Wheel of Fortune. Again, these dual energies. Um, so I'm really feeling right here is like where are the rotten roots? Where do the where do the rotten roots need to be exposed? Um, because that's what's going to allow some new growth. Here's the Ten of Cups with the Wheel of Fortune here. So, there are also some completion energy showing up. So I almost feel like you can't help right now but to see the 
underground exposed, the rotten roots, the snake with the tree here. Um, what has created instability insidiously in your life? Because it feels like it's coming about whether you are ready or not with the Wheel of Fortune. And it may show up as in, in your heart chakra. It may show up as a feeling, but it's going to be, it, it, it may show up as a feeling of being discontented or unhappy with something, um, something that almost won't let you go. And that is because it is not it that is holding on, but it is you that is holding on. And it's really time to kind of um, make this happen. And by make this happen, I mean uh, move on, turn the wheel. She also reminds me, because she's got all the, like the cup, the pentacle, the sword, the wand here. And she's like, I don't know, doing something magical with them. She reminds me of the magician. And so... To me, that tells me like you have you have the power here. Um, no one has truly disempowered you. That this is your choice. It may come out of the family. The tree also makes me feel about family. It talks about roots, right? There's something, there's something in the roots. So it could be a family thing. It could be a genetic thing. It could be that there are beliefs, you know, talking theta healing here, um, that are buried deep in the genetic history that can be cleared and, um, and the, the beneficial belief downloaded. But more than that, I'm just getting that sense, that feeling of discontentment is an indicator of what that is. And so you should pay attention to it because we are so, we are so um, programmed to filter that out, to keep like going on our daily grind without noticing what feelings and where they, what feelings we're having and where they are in our body. We just suppress them. Or we might continue to allow them to surface, but we ignore them on the, on the mental level, okay? So there are a lot of different ways that people are doing that, but this to me is saying, um, give it a spin, you know, like give it, give it the time, notice it, so that again, you can see the underside, you can see the dark, you bring light to it. I also, this is not what the snake card means, but I just got the feeling of medicine that this is the medicine, this bringing the conscious mind to the unconscious um, is the medicine. And that we often think it's more complicated than it is, but just the realization of it creates an opening for it to move out if that is our intention. So much of this is our choice, so, not even so much, all of this is our choice. And um, we think somehow that we are in need of some new information, some new technique, some healer, some psychic, some something. And, you know, we can certainly, as a healer myself, we can certainly assist. But the most important thing is, is that your intention is there and that you are willing to see the truth, the rot underneath, <laughs> um, the dark side of the moon again, they keep saying. So uh, this is not to say there's nothing wrong with you. We all have these dark shadow sides. It's part of being human. It's part of the human existence. It's part of the um, uh, spiritual evolution of each individual soul. So this is the wheel of fortune. This is part of destiny. This is part of being who you are. Okay. And so how are you showing up? Think about that this week. How are you showing up? Are you showing up as an unconditionally, unconditionally loving of yourself and others? Or are you showing up as you always have? 
you know, and that's not to say you've never been unconditionally, you know, you've never been loving of others, but there is this level of truly divine healing that comes from the true acceptance of the self and unconditional self, uh, love of self and others. Okay. So that's what I'm, that's what's coming through for this week. You guys, I really appreciate you being here and thank you so much for having, um, oh, this is hilarious. I just happened to pick this up. Uh, thank you so much for having schedule with me if you have uh, in this this past week um, or ordered readings online they have helped me very much to be able to um, support all the things that I am supporting so thank you again and before we close I just want to read that I picked up this card divine order like I was just saying Archangel Raguel everything is how it needs to be right now look past the illusion see the underlying order so that's my, even though this is backwards, that is my final message to you for today. Um, I apologize, I did not do a twin flame reading last week. I am going to do my very best to do one this week. So keep your eyes out for it, okay? Um, finally, here is my website once again. And I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.